welcome to this video. In this video, I will demonstrate some Java Spring concepts. And this is Said from JustTTC Technologies, and I am from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. If you go to my website, is a learningschool.com you will find some spring related concept and training videos actually training videos are moved from here anyway forget about this so come to the spring concepts here Yeah, just some basic uh, concept and some basic information. So what is Java Spring? What is Java Spring? Uh, for sure it's a framework. It's a framework for development just like other framework like start cybernet it's also one another framework for development and you can develop you can use spring framework for any java ee for any is not the right term for many different kinds of java ee applications also java ee web applications you can use spring framework uh, for this so yeah spring will have some core modules that will work for many java applications there are some web development related modules that are good for java web applications and web applications it can be web enterprise some aspects of java spring those are also good for mobile application specific mobile applications okay so spring is pojo based pojo and in .NET term, you can say POCO. It uh, simplifies and simplifies and makes it easier to write applications in Java EE and it also promotes some good and clean programming practices I think it provides a good object oriented design principle. It simplifies some of those concepts like AOP, IOC. We'll see. benefits of Java Spring mm. 
light wet then when it came it came as a complement or competitor to EJB sort of and EJB was heavyweight and spring lightweight couple of megabytes and we will see this concept setting but and spring gives inversion of control I think it refers to the loose coupling or dependency injection I think configuration of dependency uh, those sorts of configuration of dependencies or maintaining the life cycle of the objects or or POJO based uh, application development yeah those kind of uh, things runtime loading or lazy loading those kind of good features it, it provides some configuration based and aspect oriented programming it just helps you separate the main business logic and the some system services I think some uh, some of the main concerns in the application development those are not part of business logic but you have to address those anyway just logging transaction management uh, uh, those kind of things security filtering those kind of things it, those separate sets out it also helps you can uh, handle the team management easily I think you can assign teams and coordination all those things becomes easier and container is being container you can consider it some part of uh, IOC part of IOC I think uh, it contains the objects and creates and maintenance those are things and MVC spring is MVC based benefits of Java is spring I think the MVC there are other, other MVC frameworks uh, Java is spring being an MVC framework it also helps and MVC uh, it it's 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 not over engineered. It's not over engineered. I think many times people say it starts over engineered. It's also not uh, very lightweight. I think it's not uh, very uh, limiting. It's powerful enough and it's not over over complicated and it gives you the transaction management <coughs> transaction management I think aspect oriented programming it's, it's a uh, part of that as well exception handling Thing. convenient API for exception handling and it separates the API out it JDBC or ORM or what kind of uh, exceptions JDBC Hibernate or JDO Java dot object yeah it provides exception handling APIs and transaction management local transaction or global so yeah these are some of the benefits of uh, uh, Java Spring lightweight inversion of control one of the aspect is the dependency injection and maintaining the total life cycle of the objects and configuration based and POJO based 
aspect oriented programming cross cutting concepts and those are separated from the main business logic container I think maintenance of the life cycle of the different objects it can be part of the IOC MVC yeah MVC not over engineered or also not very limiting and also transaction management local transaction management or global transaction management both are achievable exception handler it it's provides convenient APIs for exception handling and it addresses uh, concept wise exception handling APIs JDBC ORM Different modules in Java Spring. So, what are different modules in Java Spring? Core module, bean module, web struts module web sublet module ORM module uh, JDBC module web module Web Struts, Web Sublet, Web Portlet Module, Transaction Module, Java Messaging API Module, XML uh, related OXM module so what are different Java Spring modules Spring Core module is one Bean module is one another context module application context, context module, web module, I told before, web module, web struts module, web sublet module, web portlet module, ORM module, JDBC module, transaction module, JMS module, OXM module, portlet module. Okay, so these are some of the Spring Con 
configuration files spring configuration files what is spring configuration file configuration files are usually XML files and classes POJO objects those can be configured in XML files and the dependencies to each others those can be configured in XML file and, uh, yeah I think here we are, we are referring to the iSpring configuration file uh, that is an XML file and contains classes information and describes how these classes are configured and introduced to each other dependency what is dependency injection I just kind of told just I can say one kind of inversion of control it's not the only kind of inversion control dependency injection is just one kind of uh, inversion control Okay, as, I, uh, as you told, I think it uh, gives the loose coupling nature and it reduces the code. I think instead of creating all those objects, you configure those objects and classes usually in the configuration files and with those POJO concept, you, you define those objects and what are their properties, methods and dependencies and those containers, the spring containers what they do depending on your configuration they create all those objects and maintains all those configurations and they maintains the total configuration life cycle of these objects and they also terminates the, that thing I think the good thing is I think many times in the beginning you might be using some dependency for some services to be used in those classes and objects but you might change your mind or the application it can uh, application applications need can change in that case just by changing those configurations you can uh, configure you can change the uh, change the dependency in the beginning you might say think about only the emailing service rather you might uh, want to use some text messaging service or or some social media messaging services or you might be using some specific email email sending service let's say send it or some specific way of sending emails you might change that approach you might uh, use some different sets of uh, email sending service or sms service yeah it keeps it keeps you the configuration the flexibility because if you wrote all those information into your uh, code based and uh, object based and writing applications all those things then there is little bit of I think it's not flexible you can change but still complying comp compiling dependence uh, deploying and all those things it will be more code but with dependency injection it brings much more uh, simplified it, it keeps you those all those uh, flexibility and now you do not create your objects and you describe how those objects should be created you don't directly connect your components and services together in code you just configure them <coughs> and container is then responsible for hooking all those things up and changing those dependencies becomes easier at runtime kinds of IOC 
one concept is the constructor based another is setter based constructor based the dependencies are resolved using the constructors methods setter based setter methods usually the required dependency that are done through constructor and other dependencies can be done through setter methods Just uh, reviewing what are the benefits of uh, inversion of controller less code more configuration loose coupling Runtime loading, okay. Runtime loading, lazy loading, loose coupling. I think the dependencies uh, are loosely, it's not tight, tight coupled. And flexibility because flexibility to change those uh, dependencies to a different service or different sorts of service or different implementations and sometimes it might help in testing You might also, anyway. What is AOP? What is Aspect Oriented Programming? I think the main concept is the some common uh, aspects of your system of your application. Those are not part of the part of your uh, main business logic or functionality. Those are uh, separated using Aspect Oriented Programming. We can separate uh, those out. These are called the cross-cutting concepts. Those are separate from your uh, main business uh, logic or the implementation or application. Okay. Some of the cross-cutting concepts like Logging, transaction management, security. Yeah, sometimes this can be a part of some sort of servers, application servers, or containers. You might get some ready-made solution 
just common implementation and you can extend on top of that Okay, mm, I don't want to go far th from this point. AOP, IOC, IOC container. We talked about IOC container. Just helps with those. Sidestreet.com, you can see random nodes here. Okay, some of our websites and some the some URLs might not work. I have to remove it. Anyway, good luck. I will come back with more videos.